Hey y'all, it's Denise and I'm in my studio and we're just a couple of days away from Christmas. So I'm wrapping things up. I've been working on this, my latest series, uh, Pennies from Heaven, and that is gonna be for a solo show in the middle of January. So as soon as Christmas is over, I gotta get back to it. Um, but until then, I wanna continue on with the series that I've been showing you uh, for the last couple of weeks on uh, the Remnant series. And last week we worked with Venetian plaster. This week I'm gonna show you um, some gouging and staining that I love to do with Venetian plaster. Um, it just gets some really cool effects. So if you've been following along, look forward to that. If you haven't been following this series along, jump back a couple weeks and uh, uh, studio sessions and catch up with us to, uh, you know, see how I go about pulling a series together. So with that being said, um, have a fantastic Christmas and I'll see you right again before the new year. I'll see you next weekend and I hope you're having fun with this series and, and especially the Venetian part of Venetian plaster part of it, uh, which is truly my favorite thing. So um, there you go. Let's get to it. Is I have scratch marks in them just to add a little bit of mark. I really, really like that. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. Um, it's actually pretty simple and your scratch mark is all gonna be up to you, but it just kind of breaks up the surface a little bit before we continue on. So I'll set those aside and I'll pull these up because they these are ready for that layer. And all I do is I have a little sharp item here. I have a little, a uh, tiny little screwdriver that I think it's meant for my glasses. Um, and it has a really sharp edge. Now the plaster is pretty soft, so I can just scratch the heck out of it. And this is another reason why boards are so great to work on. Now you don't wanna scrape so hard that, um, that you're, you know, you're ripping up your papers, but if you do, you know, that's not bad either. It's just another effect. don't want to do the scribbly up and down. Maybe you want to do something that's a little bit more circular and crazy. Now, like I said, it's hard to work on 14 boards and working on them all together and not having them look like a little assembly line. I'm breaking that up a bit by the colors that I'm using. Not all the colors are the same. You can also, you know, maybe make a square around this. Being that I love lines so much, that might be just perfect for me. I love boxes. I love creating lines. And, and you can see, this is getting, I can, instead of being so scribbly, I can do some real marks that are a little bit deeper and more gouged in. Now what I want to do is I want to take my polyurethane and I want to do a quick coat over these because I want to seal in that plaster so that it's not so porous because I'd like to do a glaze over this and uh, let's play 
playing around with a couple different ways to do that. And if I put a coat of the polyurethane in, it will keep the glaze from soaking into the plaster. And, and that will be kind of a nice effect because otherwise it will do, let me show you what it will do. I have a little bit of um, burnt umber here. Let me put it in there into my, it will um, soak into the plaster more if it's not porous. Although I am seeing, and it'll completely change up my color, but look how good that looks. Okay, wait, I might be having a happy accident here. So let me grab this. I save the lids for my coffee cans and my yogurt dishes and um, they make great little quick palettes. I'm gonna grab some of that and rub it in here, maybe with a little bit of water. And that's gonna grab onto that plaster cloth that I have that I laid down I am mixing water with this. And it's going to help all those little gouges show up. I watered my rag down a little bit because I'd like to have some of that blue come back. I, I love I love what this what happened here. I wasn't expecting that. Wasn't planning on that. And look how nice those uh, scratches show up as well. I hope you can see how great that looks. Looks great to me. I love this. But I am going to put a coat of the top coat on just because it will keep the plaster on um, from getting, you know, when it gets wet, from being tempted to be pulled up. I want to keep that dry, so anything I do over top of it is going to work in my favor. And there we go. That is going to be a really lovely board. And I still have more to add to that. We move that out of the way. Let's see this guy. Um, let's try a different color. Now this might, since I'm loving the blue so much, I'm gonna add a little bit of the azurite hue to this. Let's see what this is gonna do. And I, I'm adding some of the burnt umber to it as well. But you, you see how beautifully it catches in all the little nooks and crannies? Oh my goodness. I'm loving this. Now, this isn't the best brush to be using uh, for this because I this is not a scrubby little brush that I'm scrubbing with. Um, I don't really want to ruin it. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. Oh my gosh, look how nice that looks. That's pretty rough. I'm not even sure how much of that I wanna make go away. So I'm gonna take a dry rag and just get rid of some of the brush marks. So already as I'm playing with this and adding these layers and these marks, um, I'm getting completely different effects. So while they all will look like they belong in the same series, each one of them will be a little bit different. So um, loving that. How can I make this one different? 
how the heck can I make this different? Now this has a, um, already has the top coat put over top on it. So let me get a scrubby brush. More like one of my little throwaway brushes. I'm gonna take a little black. I'm gonna mix it with the raw umber and see what we come up with here. there's a little black catching in these nooks and crannies here. I like that a lot. So I'm going to get some more black in there and, and do just a flat rub over it. So hopefully that will stay in there. Oh yeah, that's really pretty. There. That's pretty nice. So I've got those two. Now let's do um, my little scraper. Just gonna draw some directional lines here. Really put, really put some gouges. Oh my gosh, this is when you just love, love, love using a board. I'm gonna turn this around. This guy's my signature from the old painting, so um, I'm gonna keep that there. And I can scrape through here to the um, green that's underneath. Have quite a mess to clean up after this video. Okay, so I've got that. What do I want to put on that? What is another color in our mix? We've got the nickel azo. I think I want to use the nickel azo. That's really pretty. So I've got all my colors from my ch color chart on there, if you remember. Where is my little color chart? Working off my chart. Let's do this. Now this one I did not put on um, a tap coat on, so we're going to see how this sticks. Let me see. See, this is going to soak in a little bit more. Kind of don't mind it though on this piece. Oh, look at look at those marks. That's just really, really delightful, delightful. And I can take some water on my rag and maybe pull a little bit of this out. bring some of that green back in.
Now, this has some really great marks in it. It's a little darker than my other pieces, but it still goes with my color chart. Um, I can always come over it with more plaster or even paint. I am not using a lot of paint in this series, but um, doesn't. there's nothing that says I can't. Let's come over here, darken this. Now I wanna hit that with my top coat. And that's probably gonna create some variations in itself because I didn't, uh, the, the paint underneath is still drying. There we go. Really nice. Might go in and hit that again. Get rid of those paint spot, uh, brush strokes. Oh, look at even more is coming up now. Kind of scumble it a little bit. My main intention here is this. This is really wonderful. Wonderful stuff to play with. So I've got that one.